Hi, my name is Bonnie Barker, and today I'm really excited to show you a new technique using the broomstick stitch. Um, it's just one of the stitches that's featured in one of my bags in my leaflet called Bags and Backpacks with Leisure Arts Company. Should be available um, in a lot of the craft stores or online at Amazon uh, or at leisurearts.com. Um, but today we're going to learn how to combine beads with broomstick while working broomstick stitch in the round. Boy, doesn't that sound complicated? It really isn't. But I'm going to show you how to demystify this and you'll really be rocking this stitch real soon. Um, make sure before we begin, you're going to need three of these. Um, these are gargantuan uh, knitting sticks. Um, it's U.S. size 50. So you're going to need three of these before you get started. All right, let's go. Okay, I wanted to show you where you were going with this. I'm going to show you um, a row of broomstick, which is right here, and I have beads in between. I must apologize for the condition of this bag um, before I go any further. This is a bag that I have lovingly carried with me many, many, many times in many, many places. So it does show a lot of wear, but that also can be a selling feature of, of this particular design because it is one that washes, it, it wears well, it lasts a long time. Um, but anyway, I just want you to see how you have the broomstick stitch. And in included in that, we will have a bead occasionally here and there. Okay? So we'll just, we need to go ahead and get your equipment together. We need three large knitting needle size, U.S. size 50. And I also need to get a very small crochet hook that will actually go through the inside of the beads that you're going to use. Okay? To start, let me show you how far I've come. I've already done the bottom of the bag and I've gone through the first series of popcorn rows and the low front ridge. Um, you have to follow the pattern to get those details but um, I just am mostly here going to show you this technique adding beads to broomstick in the round. Okay so I've chained one and rather than working from right to left or if you're looking at this um, from the left-handed version you know from from left to right um, we're going to work the opposite. We're going to work from left to right or from right to left if you're a lefty. Okay, so it's going to be a little bit backwards here. So what I've done is I've taken the, the large size 50 knitting needle or knitting stick really. Okay, I'm going to put that there. Now I'm going to pull a loop through each each stitch. I've already got the first stitch. We're going to call this the first stitch. We're going to call this one the first stitch so you can see it. I'm going to stick my hook in. I'm just using a size H crochet hook that I was using for the pattern. Okay. And we're going to pull a loop up. Okay. And then we're just simply going to put it over the stick and then pull the string taut. Okay. You're going to want to keep these strings kind of kind of tight. Okay, and I'm going to do this all the way around. But the problem with working in the round is that the stick we're working with is straight. So this is just okay, let me see if I can give you a better view here. And I'm going to stick it in the next. And also notice I'm going through both top loops or going through the entire V. Then put it over the stick. Make sure you pull each one tight as you go. You want to keep the same tension um, because as you do that, then you're going to have consistency in the size of the loops. If you don't do that, it's going to look a little weird, but that's okay. That's okay. You get that when you're in the learning process. Okay. So I'm going to continue filling this, this needle up with loops 
until I get about one third of the way of all the stitches and I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. Be back. Okay. Now I want to show you what I have so far. Here's the end of the hook. Or pff, here I am, a crochet saying hook. The knitting stick, knitting needle, whatever. Um, it doesn't really matter how many that you put on, as long as it's a roughly a third. Uh, doesn't have to be totally exact. Okay. So now we're ready for the next the next knitting needle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it onto the seam. And let me show you where I have, I still have the yarn on the back side of where I'm working. It's back behind me here. So I'm just going to continue. I'm going to pull up another loop. And instead of putting it on this hook or needle, blah, I'm going to stick it right here on the new one. So what's going to happen is I'm going to start going a different direction. Okay, and in the end, we're going to have, uh, I will show you in a few minutes, we will have a triangle. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the next, just keep going, the next, uh, i got to find my yarn there, the next stitch, bring up a loop, and put it over. Now here is where you may want to be careful that you keep the yarn taut because um, this connecting loop can tend to get a little bit loose so just just give it an extra little tug and quite frankly you are you are good to go you can just ignore this stick and just keep working okay I mean, can you see what I'm doing here so the next stitch is going to be here I'm also wrapping it around the hook it just seems to be the easiest way to get it on there okay pull from the back I have to do a few of these. This looks really, whoops, gotta be careful not to split the yarn. This looks a little awkward. And quite frankly, it, it can get a little bulky feeling, but it's really not difficult. It's just a matter of getting these um, strands. Whoops, I split the yarn again. Getting these strands on the on the knitting needles. You know, this is this is actually the most work. After this, it, it get, becomes very easy, and we get back to pure crocheting. Okay, let me finish getting this on, and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so let me show you where we are now. I have a lot of loops on the first the first needle, and then I've come around and put a lot of loops on the second needle. You can kind of see what's happening here. We're we're starting to get a a triangle. We're going to have a nice, if I can get it all in the camera there, I'm going to have a nice triangle when we're finished. So what we're going to do now, we're going to do the same as we did before. We left off here. So we're just going to keep on going. We're going to pull up a loop, if you can see that, in the next, the next place. And we're going to stick it on the third stick. Okay, and pull it nice and taut. I still have my yarn on the back side. It's a lot to try to get in here. Okay, and we're just going to go to the next stitch and keep on going around. Okay, just like that. Um, don't be afraid if, like, say this loop is a little bit looser. You can always go back and, and pull them and play with them a little bit. Again, we're not going for perfection, we're just going for some consistency here. I'll do one more loop, and then I'm going to, I'll come back after I finish this section, so you don't have to see every single one. Okay, after you've done putting loops, um, going through all the stitches in a round, you should have something that looks like this, like a triangle. It's just a lot easier to work than, than working with just two sticks and pretty much impossible with one. So that, that's why you need three sticks here. Um, this may conjure up uh, you know, past visions of, of seeing a knitter perhaps working on a pair of socks. This is exactly why they use so many needles is so they can, so they can go around in a circle. Okay. Now we're going to start doing the broomstick. Okay. In order to do this, we're going to have to remove um, four 
loops at a time. I'm going to show you two ways to do this. Okay, the first way, it feels safer, although maybe a little more difficult, is taking four loops off. Okay, so you have one, two, three, four. Now I have my yarn behind me. I put the, the needle with the, the four, and what we're going to do is we're going to pull the string through. I'm going to chain one. This is just for the first. Now notice that when you put your loops in, when you start crocheting, they will naturally twist and make this nice little pattern for you. I'm going to crochet one single crochet for every loop. So we had four loops, so I'm going to do four single crochets. One, two, three, four. Okay. So this is what you have so far. And don't worry if it doesn't look perfect yet because it will straighten out. Okay, now we're gonna need one more string. Now this string, this loop is where we're gonna put the bead. Now let me let me talk about beads for just a second here. Okay, I'm gonna add this bead. Now before I set these beads aside to use for this project, I found a hook that was small enough to go into them. There's no big rule on this. I'm using a size one. It's it's a steel hook. Um, now what I did beforehand was to make sure that the needle comfortably goes through the hole. Now, now one thing really nice about this technique is that if you have a bead, let's say that that's not, well, I don't have one here, but a lot of times you'll see beads, let's say like this one, that has a little bit of a flaw to it. And, and maybe perhaps it looks like you can't get all the way through. It's just a little rough looking. Well, if you use this hook, what's nice about it is you can kind of clean it up a little bit and get that little piece out of the way so that now, you know, the bead is very much usable. So I, I've got a whole bunch of huh, these beads that I've not been able to use in the past. I could just use this hook to clean them out and, and be ready to go. So all we're going to do here is put the hook through the bead and then simply pull if I can get this in the center here for you pull this pull this through just whoops except you need to get all the strands let me let me try that again that that is one problem with this uh, this uh, cheaper yarn too is a little splitty but it's very usable okay so that's all you got to do is pull that through and I'm going to put this hook down. I'm going to pick this up. My yarn. Uh, let's bring it on this side. Okay. And now I'm just going to crochet one single crochet there. And that's pretty much what we're going to do. Now I'm going to show you another technique that's a little less of a headache than taking them off, you know, one one section at a time. Um, and this is a little scary. Before I do it, I just want to explain what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull out this, this entire knitting stick, and all these loops are going to be exposed. Um, first time I did this, it, it feels a little freaky, but trust me, if, if you have the time to sit and finish this section after you pull it out, you'll be totally fine. It'll be a, so much easier, and, and it's very doable. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull the stick out. Okay, so now I've just got a bunch of these loops, which will stay intact for me. They're not going to go anywhere. They're not going to, you know, leave me or anything. So I'm going to take the next four, and you'll see right away, uh, except you got to put the yarn behind, you'll see right away how much easier this is going to be to work with. So one, two, three, four. I'm just going to do four single crochets. That's two, three. Four. Now the next one, I need to grab a bead. Now I'm going to mix this up too. I'm going to put this aside. I'm going to mix the colors of my beads up and just have a little bit of fun with it. So the next one is right here. So I'm just going to pull this through like that. Okay, put that down. Pick this up. My yarn. And one single crochet. 
see how see how difficult that is it's really not difficult at all so one two three four okay it's like doing electronics they look so complicated but once you just know which button to push when you're good okay so that's one two three four now it's time to pick another bead i'm gonna put this hook down i'm gonna go for i'm gonna go for another another colored bead here another darker rosewood okay i'm gonna stick the hook through pick my loop and simply uh, keep the yarn from splitting and pull it through look you know what that split pretty bad let's try that again this will probably be the time for us also now look what happened here one of the loops it got a little big no problem just pull it back as you work through this, it will even out. So let's. I'm going to say this is um, another reason to stick with quality yarn. Um, this is you know, big box store yarn, which is which is fine. Um, but should you ever get a chance to work with uh, you know higher quality yarn, I encourage you to just go for it and, and give it a try. Now I'm going to have to adjust this because the yarn split on me. I think it will self-adjust once I get going on the next one. Yep, there we go. Okay. So now I'm ready to take the next four. One, two, three, four, which are right in order. Okay. Except the yarn has to be behind. I keep making that mistake. Okay. One, two, three, four. And I promise you it's, a, it's easier than even what you're seeing me do here because uh, you won't be having a camera in front of you as you do this like I do. Okay, put the hook, whoa, put the hook into the bead. And this time we're going to try to pull up the loop without it splitting. Ah, there we go. Perfect. Well, maybe not so perfect. Okay. And then do a single crochet there. Take the next four. One, two, three, four. And we're going to do four single crochets. One, two, three, four. I'm going to stop and just show you what I've gotten so far. Okay looks a little messy, a little sloppy right now because we haven't come along with the row that's going to come across. But I'm going to go ahead and finish this and show you what I got in a few minutes. Okay, now I've finished all the, uh, the loops on the first knitting stick. So now I'm going to go to the second one and we're just simply going to take all the loops off. Just just like this just take all the loops off okay so now we have a mess that looks something like this and I'm just going to continue crocheting where I left off again keeping the yarn behind me pick up the next one two three four and do the four single crochets in the big loop two three four and I'm gonna I'm gonna use one of the rosewood colored beads here. Stick the steel hook through the hook. Pick up the loop. Hopefully get it through without splitting the yarn. There we go. That worked well. I think sometimes the um, you know, the roughness of the of the wood can can do that. So you just have to kind of work with it but it's very doable. Okay, now this one's kind of a little shorter. One, two, three, four. Um, you can just kind of pull up on them to get them even. One, two, three, four. So basically it's the same thing over and over again um, as you go around. So after I finish this row, I'll get back to you. Okay, let me show you what I've got so far. Okay, I've gone all the way around the bag 
Okay, and I've got my beads. I kind of alternated light and dark. I kind of like that. You can do whatever you want. You can use all the same beads. You can even use something other than wood. It's up to you. But let me show you. Um, now we're back to the very first broomstick stitch and bead. And here's the last bead. Just so happens it worked out. Um, if for whatever reason you have like, oh gosh, I have, you know, six loops instead of five loops, it's not a big deal. Just go ahead and, you know, crochet five loops together with five single crochets and then, you know, stick your last bead in there. I promise nobody is ever going to know. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet of the round. I'm going to chain one. I'm not going to turn. I'm going to crochet in the first stitch where I joined and I'm going to crochet one single crochet in every single crochet around which is at this stage pretty much straight crocheting. Let's just make sure when you're using this this um, cotton if it does have a tendency to split make sure you have all the strands on your hook. Okay so I'm going to crochet in every single crochet all the way around and then I'll get back to you and show you how that looks. Okay, I finished the additional row of, south of um, single crochet and I just wanted to show you a little bit better view. You can really see the beauty of this stitch coming out now that it's been you know reinforced with more stitches and as you know the bag stretches and whatnot it, it's it, it's a really nice delightful stitch and as you can see you know behind here you see the blue coming through um, you can line it with any kind of fabric I, I would recommend a solid colored fabric that that you like or maybe even a, a neutral you know kind of a, a fabric like an off-white um, but if you go with a darker color it can really show off the stitch work that you have completed here so um, do enjoy this uh, if you need more information like on the popcorn stitches or the low front ridge um, just stick with Bonnie Bay crochet channel here on YouTube um, and those stitches are there if you just go ahead and you know put that in the search um, those stitches should come up for you should you have any questions you can feel free to contact me at my website at bonniebaycrochet.com um, the email bonniebay at me that's me dot com I'll be glad to hear from you if you have any questions I will do my best to get back to you as soon as I can God bless bye bye